Today I have a very awesome warm-up routine just for you. Of course, there are so many ways to warm up, but recently I had a lesson with one of my students and uh, he came to show me a really nice uh, warm-up routine. A nice warm-up exercise that takes, you know, around 10-15 minutes and it doesn't tire too much the hand and I feel that my hand, after doing this uh, routine, it feels really well placed. So Stefan, if you are watching this video, thank you so much for sharing this with me and thank you for sharing this with us because I'm sure that many people watching this video are really going to appreciate this. So about this warm up, it's really easy. It doesn't take much of your time and you get so many benefits of it. So after the warm up, I will play the whole warm up through. I will go more into detail and explain you a couple of things, what you need to pay attention, what to avoid, what are the common pitfalls and so on. So starting in three, two, one, let's go.
it's no big deal, right? And I'm sure that you are very well warmed up now. So now let's get settled, my friends. So by playing a slow scale as I did and as Stefan did, this will give you the time, you know, to process things for intonation, course correcting a couple of things, and especially you can focus on the sound. But there is always a but. When playing slow scales, there is always this common pitfall, and that is something that every falls into it. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the wrong use of vibrato. Let me show you an example what I mean by that. Inconsistent vibrato, that's a problem. So I highly recommend that you play scales without any, any, any vibrato. And the reason why is, is that you can hear better the note, the pitch, the intonation. And besides, vibrato, it can be misused. You know, you can abuse of it. Let's say you're playing a wrong note, or not a wrong note, but it's a little bit out of tune. And with the vibrato, you can kind of disguise it. So you're actually cheating on yourself. So stay cool, stay calm, and no vibrato at all. But of course, if you need to work on vibrato on your scales, you can absolutely do that. Then you need to make a decision like, today I'm gonna play my scales without vibrato, so I wanna focus 100% on intonation. Let's say tomorrow you say, okay, I need to develop my vibrato, so I want to do uh, with vibrato. But you need to make a decision either without vibrato or with vibrato, but not an inconsistent vibrato. If you wanna do it with vibrato, okay, fine, but then you need to make sure that it's a continuous vibrato, so you're transferring the vibrato from one finger to another. Let me just play a couple of notes here. So as you saw and heard, I was really vibrating every note from the beginning until the end. And that ending, I was transitioning to the next finger. So that's very important, either without vibrato or with vibrato, just like I did. Now we come to the next thing, bow distribution, bow management, or however you call it. So when playing a slow scale or any slow arpeggio, or any slow exercise, make sure that you're using the whole length of the bow. So no inconsistency again. Again, I will show you an example where I use an inconsistent bow use and a consistent bow use. <laughs> So you probably heard the difference. And that is because if you have an inconsistent bow distribution, you cannot create bow transitions. So the uh, bow connections are not going to be smooth. So pay really good attention at this. Besides, bad bow connections. We don't want that, right? So again, pay attention to that. And last thing for today, course correcting the intonation. Sometimes when we play a note, it doesn't matter which note, we stick on it. And even if we play out of tune, we don't correct it. You know, it seems like we're frozen. So when you play scales in a slow pace, course correct immediately the note where you feel the intonation is not so good. So again, I'm gonna show you an example over here.
So this is all very um, millimeter work. Of course, when you want to course correct, don't start to move your whole hand or something. It's about maybe rotating a little bit further with your finger, rotating a little bit forward. So we have this note out of tune, but if we move slightly, you know, just by millimeter, a little bit forward, then you might have the right note, the right intonation. Of course, we prefer to get the note at once, but this is just in case if you play a wrong note, a bad intonation, and uh, you need to course correct. Because if you're gonna play scales and you're gonna play out of tune, uh, the notes, you're gonna hear that. And then after a while, it's gonna be normal for you, but it is actually not normal. So again, you play scales in a slow pace or any musical piece that is slow, course correct immediately if something smells funny. And with all the things mentioned before, the same goes for the arpeggios and the same goes for any exercises, any musical pieces that you are doing. If you like this lesson, give it a like. If you're not subscribed yet, then consider to subscribe if you want to see more lessons like this or more musical adventures, inspiration lessons and so many other content that I have on my channel. And now that you're still here with me, why not to watch this lesson over here where I talk about creating a lovely smooth sound on the cello. Thank you for watching and I'll see you over here.